Hi and welcome to this video log with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Well in this video log I'm going to try and get every open water swimmer to be as comfortable as they possibly can in the water and more than that as safe as they possibly can. That's my aim, that's my promise to you, that's what you're going to get. The reason for that is that open water venues have been opened up uh, to the public. It's one of the things you can now do in the lockdown situation. And the traditional venues, the ones that triathletes go to for swimming, are restricting often the swimmers who can come. They're, first of all, you have to make an appointment to go at a particular time. You have to social, socially distance. And the only people who are allowed to go in a lot of them are those who already experienced open water swimmers. This doesn't help the novice. The novice, therefore, has to either go to a lake, a quarry, um, a river or the sea, which, firstly, are cold, and secondly, there's no one looking after you. Now, if you're going to do that, and it's a wonderful thing to do, I want you to be as safe as possible. If you have any questions, please just post them below. Either I or someone else will come along and give you an answer to your question. Also, if you are finding this good, please just subscribe and hit that like button. Also, if you find our content good, hit the notification bell and you'll be told every time we upload another video. Swim temperatures in lakes at the moment are about 17 to 19 degrees. And that's not the whole story. If you go into a river, which is fast flowing, it might be colder and it's likely to be colder. If you go into the sea, that's almost certainly colder. Now, if you go in 15 degrees centigrade and below, that's very cold water. And you really do have to beware when going into cold water that you do it safely. Now, the minimum equipment you need for open water swimming is very simple. You need a pair of goggles because otherwise you are swimming blind often. Um, now, the, I wear these. These are quite large goggles because they have inserts. Now, this one's a bifocal insert with my prescription and this one is a polarised prescription. So I can put these in if it's sunny um, and actually see everything around me quite clearly. That clearly is important if you're not swimming in a laned pool where you can easily see the line on the bottom. You also remember can't necessarily put your feet down so you need to be able to see what's around you. The next thing that's quite important is a hat. Now a bright coloured hat does two things. Firstly if people or vehicles, that's vehicles on the water, um, even windsurfers and, and kite surfers are on the water around you. You are actually going to be seen much easier if you have a bright hat on. Second reason to wear a hat, most of your heat loss actually comes through your head. Put a, a one or even two hats on and your heat loss is minimised and that is hugely important. Now I'm going to go through the rest in the order that I think is important. And the first thing I think is important is that you are relaxed in your breathing when you go in open water. If you're a beginner, it's best never really until you're very used to it to get out of breath. I see a lot of people rush into the ocean and splash away at a rate of knots they cannot keep up after they've done the first 25 metres. Now, after the first 25 metres, you're in water that you can't stand up in. And not only that, you don't know what's under your feet. So, it's really sensible to control your breathing and make it a really easy, nice experience when you're open water swimming. I'll show you how to do that. It's very important, especially if you're new, that you pace yourself and warm yourself up in the water and you get used to easy breathing so that you're very comfortable. Now, I'm going to start breathing in and out in the water. In, and I'll slowly but surely put my head deep in the water as I get used to the temperature. When you're comfortable with that nice 
inhalation and exhalation under the water. Then you want to swim off. You want to swim off where your arms match that breathing pace, not where your breathing pace matches your arms. You don't want to go and your arm go in that speed. Because if your arms are, are following your breathing, you're going to be really nice and controlled. And that's what we want when we swim. So effectively, if I move back a bit, Right, so it's... And I'm moving off exactly the way that I've just been practicing my breathing. And if you do that, you'll instantly be comfortable. Now, if you're wearing a wetsuit for the first time, after 200 to 400 meters, you may well feel like you're tight chested. It happens to virtually everyone who wears a wetsuit. It's perfectly normal. So if you think, oh, I can't breathe, it's exactly what happens to everyone. So just, if you feel, oh, I'm tight chested, I can't really breathe, just stop, relax, turn over, rest, recover. And when you go off again, you actually not feel that tight chestedness again. But remember, we want to keep the intensity down until you're happy to raise it. So that breathing pattern is hugely important. So the main principle is to let your breathing dictate the speed of your arm. So it's and not your arms dictate the speed of your breathing. Because if you are breathing easy, you will keep breathing easy. And remember, with everything you do, you really should warm up before you start really exercising hard. The second most important thing is to know where you are, where you're heading to, and what's around you. Now, a lot of that can be done before you go in to open water. So if you're in a lake, have a look around the lake Think what you might be able to cite to where you want to go. If you're in a river, you can do exactly the same thing. If you're in the sea, then you want to look on shore to see what you think is around you and where you want to come back to. For example, if you're setting off, turn around, look behind you, that's where you want to come back to. Look to the right and the left of you so you can see easily visible uh, features from the ocean or from the sea that you can see out there that you can get back to. Then, when you get in the water, go out to wherever you think you might want to swim along, turn round, have a look at those things again to see how they look when you're that high in the water. Things change when you're in the water, the vision of them changes, and you want to make sure that you can head to these things exactly as you need to. Okay, so we've taken our bearings. Let's see what sighting and actually looking at those bearings might be like from a pool perspective. So sighting and how to sight is hugely important. Actually looking at something that you recognise. You've done your reconnaissance, you know exactly where things are and what you're going to he be heading towards. But sighting, actually looking up out the water, is a time when you're actually becoming less streamlined. I'll show you what I mean. If I raise my head out the water, my back end drops and that makes me much less streamlined and actually much less efficient as a swimmer. So when I, when I sight, I want to do so without losing much speed. And the way to do that is to look forward with your head as low as possible, and then turn to the side to breathe. So, turning to the side to breathe is hugely important because when you're in the ocean, especially you can have waves coming at you in the front, um, and you're more likely to swallow water if you breathe as you sight. Also, your head has to be higher to be able to breathe. Let me show you if I do two logs. See there, I could see everything in front of me and I wasn't slowing down in terms of my swimming. That's quite important. You just want to keep on going, you don't want to lose momentum, otherwise you're actually using more energy than you need. 
find out about local conditions. If you're swimming in a river, find out if it's fast flowing, if there's particular bits that are difficult to actually manoeuvre through. You'll be surprised what locals will tell you if you just ask them, excuse me, is, is it safe to swim here? What's the flow of water like? Which way does it go? You can often see that yourself, but if you're a novice open water swimmer, that's very difficult to actually view. If you're in the sea, find out if there's a tide change coming. You might think that the sea is perfectly benign, but if the tide is just about to change from coming in to going out, you could be in trouble if you go out 200 metres and can't get back in. So ask the locals what the conditions are and what you should be looking out for. Remember that when you're swimming in open water, it's not like swimming in a pool. In a pool, the whole thing is one temperature. But when you're swimming in open water, you'll suddenly go through warm patches and very cold patches. Now that might just be that the floor has dipped away and therefore there's a pocket of water holding cold water in it. But that doesn't help if you're already cold. So you really do want to take precautions, want to find out if those things are true. And if it does happen, if you do hit a piece of cold water, think, OK, this is just natural. If you think it's too cold, you can always swim back the way you came. As a general principle, always swim into a current on your way out so that current can bring you back on the way in. And the only time that can't be done, obviously, is with the tide coming in and out. But if there's a current going one way or the other, basically swim into it on the way out and with it on the way back when you might be slightly more tired. Also, think about the wind, because if there's a strong wind, swimming into the wind on the way out is far better than swimming into it on the way back, because wind can really push you back when your arms are coming out of the water. And once again, if you're tired, that will be worse than if you're actually fresh and you know all I have to do is turn around, this wind's going to help me get back. If you are really a beginner to open water swimming, then you should really consider wearing a wetsuit. So let's talk about wetsuits. Um, I think wetsuits are an important thing for beginner open water swimmers because they do a couple of things. Firstly, they are they really insulate you. You, you, you feel very warm in reasonably cold water. I've been in water temperatures down to 10 degrees centigrade. I've not gone any further than that. Um, a wetsuit actually becomes warm once it's got a layer of water in it. So you do have to go through that initial phase of letting the water through. But once that's through, you actually have an insulating layer of water that's being warmed up to your body. That's hugely important. The second thing is, it's incredibly buoyant. Um, now, buoyancy in open water is quite important because you can't put your feet necessarily down on the floor. And if you can't put your feet down on the floor, the easier you float, the better. And a wetsuit makes you float easier. OK, so putting on a wetsuit is quite important the way you do it. Um, not because of style, but because you want it really to fit properly. Otherwise it's going to either have gaps in it or it's going to drag your arms back when you move. So I'm going to start by putting a leg in. If you notice, I'm going to pull it up quite high. I'm not going to have it right by the end of my leg. Now we'll go for the second leg. And again, I'm going to pull it up quite a way up my leg. Now when I'm pulling this, I'm grabbing it with a pinch as opposed to my fingernails. Because neoprene for a swimming wetsuit is quite soft. And if you grab it with your fingernails, you're going to do some damage. So I'm now just pulling it up on the legs, trying to get it as high as possible into the crotch area. It does take a little while to do, and then start pulling the body up bit by bit. And you can see it's up into the crotch area. There's no excess particularly, but where I do want excess is under the arms. Now, I'm going to take off my watch because that makes it difficult to get over the arm, so I'm just going to put that down. In the pinch, drag it up, drag it up. And again, I've gone quite high on the arm. There we go. So you're trying to get out all those wrinkles. Once you've got out all those wrinkles, you want to pull it from the back 
across. Yeah, so now I've got it quite high under my arm. You'll notice that there's a little doubling of material under the arm itself. That's important, and I'll explain that in a short while. So, other arm, again, grabbing it, pulling up, trying to get out those creases. Done that, then up over the shoulder, and from behind, kind of grab that and just pull it up. I'm going to try and make sure. Try and make sure that the flap at the back is is flat. Because if you're on your own and you want to pull your wetsuit up, if it's not flat, you'll actually hit the flap and that'll stop it coming up all the way. Now you pull it up with the cord, and as I have done, all the way to the top, and then just put the flap over. Now the wetsuit's fully on, and you'll see that I've got a little bit of excess under each arm. And that excess allows me to move freely without stretching the wetsuit against my shoulder. That's hugely important. Now, I haven't gone over lubing your neck, underarm and shoulders. And that's because as a new person using a wetsuit, you won't have those things. So if you get the wetsuit really nice up under the arm, you won't have it pulling as you go forward. And that's hugely important. So now we've got the wetsuit on, we're ready to put in our goggles and hat and get in the water. Okay, now I'm in the pool and I don't really need a wetsuit in my pool, but I'm wearing it to show you one or two things that'll help you when you go open water swimming. Firstly, I've let the water come through the wetsuit and you feel it trickle down. That'll feel slightly cold initially, but it's essential for the wetsuit to actually work properly. So when you feel the water trickling down, don't feel, oh my God, I'm getting water in my wetsuit. No, that's exactly how a wetsuit works. It fills with water and that small amount of water against your body keeps you warm. So don't worry about it. Okay, next, you'll look, I'm quite relaxed and I'm just floating in the water without doing a single thing. I don't have to move my arms. I don't have to move my legs. I'm just floating. And if you ever get into trouble in a wetsuit, all you have to do is turn on your back and float. And you can float really easy. So that's a huge benefit of wearing a wetsuit, that you actually float really well. Okay, so removing a wetsuit the best way. Um, effectively, you're going to have a pulley, a pulley down the back. You've got a, a, a strap that you're going to get hold of, but you've also got the Velcro tied at the top. So if you pull the Velcro and this at the same time, you then pull one pull one sleeve off and then with the other hand pull the other and drag your arm out. Now notice my arm's virtually out. Now it's out completely. Out, then out. And it's out completely. It's only a question of rolling down the legs and you're completely out the wetsuit. But once you're to this stage you can actually take as much time as you like unless you're in a triathlon and that's not, not what this particular vlog is about. If you enjoy swimming there's really no reason why you shouldn't enjoy open water swimming. Just with a few precautions you can make sure that you have a really nice experience the first time you go. As a coach I obviously want you to enjoy sport but I want you to enjoy sport safely and I really want you to enjoy open water swimming. So hopefully you've enjoyed this, it's helped you get out there into the open water. Any questions as I say post them below and I'll see you soon. Keep up. Well.